Friends, um, thank you for uh, your interest. Uh, this discussion is going to be about public misunderstanding of risk and uh, how, uh, when it comes to terrorism or Ebola, the uh, the the press and uh, actually many academics people who should know better uh, conduct uh, some kind of naive empiricism and mislead us completely uh, you should never compare things that are fat tail to things that don't have the same tail risk attribute at the collective level thin tails and fat tails should never be compared so let's start uh, let me quickly explain the difference between Mediocristan and Extremistan. Mediocristan is a domain in which tail events do not have very large consequences, and Extremistan is one in which everything comes from the tails. So let's take uh, uh, the following um, example as a thought experiment. You have a tail event, you just uh, sampled randomly from the population, and um uh, and and uh, uh picked two people with a total height of four four point one meters what's the most likely combination one point one and uh three no ten centimeters and four no the most likely combination is four point oh five at uh, two point oh five and two point oh five simply the probability of exceeding three sigmas in a Gaussian distribution, assuming it's three sigmas, okay, and with no loss of uh, generality, um, is something like 0 0.00134. The probability of exceeding that twice is the square, but the probability of exceeding six sigma is two orders of the magnitude uh, worse. It's, uh, it's smaller, it's a 10 to the minus 10. So you're much more likely to select randomly two, uh, three sigmas, than one uh, six sigmas. Now let's compare to extreme stand, and let's say we play the same sort of experiment, and you select two people, and they have a total net worth of thirty six million. It's rare, uh, considering that you have seven billion people on the planet, uh, most of whom have no money. Uh, what's the most likely combination? Is it eighteen million and eighteen million? No. So that's the difference between the two domains. The most likely combination here is going to be 35.999 million and 0 0.001 or something of that order. Okay? So the difference between the two domains will allow us to analyze and view the world. So we start with the catastrophe principle for the class of sub exponential distribution, which is pretty much sub exponential as a demarcation between thin tail and fat tail. For that class, ruin is much more likely to come from a single extreme event than a series of bad episodes. Just like we saw here, you're much more likely to get your wealth from a single person than a collection of people. So that domain is actually quite vicious because analyzing <clears throat> what's going on is not something that you can do casually. You cannot just compare two things. It's not like changing the color of the dress. Say I'm gonna analyze something like terrorism, which is fat tail, uh, wars, fat tailed, um, Ebola, multiplicative uh, epidemics, fat tailed, and compare them to falls from ladders. You can't, you just can't. Now, incidentally, here we have the, cl the classification of distribution that I did for my next book. And you can see that the, uh, the yellowish seg segment is the one that corresponds to thin tails. And you, we can talk about them with confidence because what you see pretty much is what you got because the statistical properties are revealed very quickly owing to a, a good functioning of a lot of large numbers. Now, of course, there's some situation of fat tails where I have this, forget about it. You cannot really figure out a statistical property ever from the data, but these are luckily rare. Most situations are gonna be in this zone when where we can you know have a clue but it takes uh, some kind of uh, hard work to do so it's not casual empiricism that will help you a representation here of course of course you can identify which is Midgorkistan and which is extremistan just from looking at the properties okay and you can see the time series visibly here you have one block 
that dominates the whole picture. You don't have that here. Uh, now, comes to public understanding of risk. Uh, uh, the, there is a public misunderstanding of risk. It may be irrational to not take seriously the risk of a shark attack in San Diego. A lot of psychologists who study the perception of risk would tell you, justify and as justifiable, that the risk of being um, hit by a truck on the way to the beach is going to be vastly greater than the risk of being harmed by a shark on days when sharks have been reported to be in the water. And uh, maybe, maybe you may doubt such reasoning by saying that uh, let's not mess up, uh, let's not mess with our uh, ingrained uh, ability to detect risk, even if it overshoots at times, because we've survived several hundred million years. And what does psychologists know? We don't even know if his paper will survive. It will maybe be debunked by someone else. But let's, let's take the point. However, this does not translate into these naive statistical analogies that U.S. and U.S. ladders kill far more Americans than Muslim terrorists. In the past, that number was true because uh, you can trust uh, empiricism when it comes to tail variables because things don't change year on year, and if they do, it's not, nothing dramatic. The probability that the number of people killed by ladders, the probability of that number doubling in the United States without any change in the structure, any change in the ladders, any change in behavior of Americans, any uh, change in uh, uh, alcoholic consumption, that number, the probability of that number doubling between, say, 2017 and 2018 is something over the order of 10 to the minus, uh, I don't know, somewhere between minus 10 and minus 20. It's so small you don't really care. So it's very, very small. Well, you can't say the same about terrorism, and here is the evidence. The very same New York Times, <laughs> the same article, explained that, hey, you know, the odds were, were not 1 in 17 million. They're 1 in 6 million, about two and a half times. So you realize, because the estimator is very unstable, a year is going to deliver a number. It's going to be very different from the previous year, and, and so on. It is the properties of fat tail distribution to not uh, match. The properties don't match past data. In other words, uh, the, the, what we call sample mean does not reveal the true mean. Therefore, journalistic fact-checking doesn't correspond to statistical properties. But that tends to hold for thin tail variables. So we end up with Ebola, uh, for example, people um, e explaining uh, that uh, we're naive to worry about Ebola when alcohol kills so many people. But alcohol is not that multiplicative. It may be an epidemic, but nothing like Ebola. And with the same instability, Ebola probably could wipe out uh, a lot of people. So the reasoning should be as follows. Consider a tail event, as we did with the rich uh, 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 person, as we did with the two tall uh, people. Um, consider a tail event, say you read a newspaper some, you know, someday that uh, 100, million, 100 million people were killed um, by, 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 uh, by something. What, that, what is that something more likely to be, fall from ladders or terrorism? Was it more likely to be alcohol or Ebola? So in the tails, the ratio of probabilities is vastly higher than it is in the body. And that's what we're concerned with. When you do risk management, you worry about the tails. So, and then there's another um, defect in reasoning that uh, uh, inviting us to not worry about Ebola because Ebola didn't harm us. But the reason Ebola turned out to be um, relatively uh, uh, contained and, 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 and not very harmful is because we worried about it. It's the same with terrorism. So that reasoning breaks down. Now, a lot of people commit these fallacies. I tend to find Steven Pinker a, a, a prime person for that, just simply because he, neither he has a statistical understanding nor does he have the humility to know so. Um, but where it gets very dangerous is with a nudge group these people working for Mr. Obama, who I'm glad is no longer here, and I mean no longer in Washington, 
and and we're trying to nudge us into biases when in fact we uh, these biases were not uh, real and and, fa- and increasing uh, thus increasing risk in society thank you for listening to me and have a great day